now we're gonna be playing the rest of the voicemails that I got. These are more like fun personal questions. So let's play a couple. Hey, Steffi, Grace from New Zealand here. Hope you're feeling okay after the finale and you've figured out what to do with life now that killing is over. Not gonna lie, took me a hot minute. So Villanelle is absolutely nothing like me, but yet I still feel like I can relate to her in some weird way, especially this season. So my question for you is, what aspects of Villanelle or even Eve can you relate to or resonate with you? Or if none, what elements would you like to have? Thanks so much for your videos. I'm really gonna miss you a lot. <laughs> Okay, Grace, thank you for your question. For me, if I was like, who are you most like, Eve or Villanelle? I am definitely like an Eve Palastri, like especially whenever Sandra O oh freaks out and stresses, like anytime she like freaked out in season one. Okay. That is me. Oh, Ooh, that is me when I am really stressed. Oh, oh, oh. Maybe the character traits that Eve has that most resonates with me is, and I would say, you know what, true for Villanelle as well. These are two women who just really want to be good at what they do, and they really want to be good at their job. They take pride in their work. Like, Villanelle takes pride in the fact that she is good at killing. She just wants to do a good job. I'm pretty sure she says that at some point. And same with Eve. Like, I mean, she has such a relentless tenacity in that sense i relate to both of those elements and then i mean specifically what elements i think you were more so thinking about villanelle like what elements do i wish i had of villanelle like well first of all honey i wish i had that cash so i could be wearing like cool nice luxurious clothes like miss villanelle like we we love a look now i wouldn't want to get the money in a shady way but i mean also i mean she earned the money the killing is how she quite literally makes it killing so i also just like i really like villanelle's boldness she's so unapologetically herself she's bold in every sense of the word whether it's her fashion whether it's her personality whether it's her sense of humor she like just is who she is you take her or you leave her and i really really find that admirable to the point where sometimes i feel like when i watch villanelle it's like very like liberating to me like, I don't know if any of you guys feel that way when you watch someone like Villanelle, but like watching a character be that free is very like, ooh, that's cool. Like, I wish I could be like that as well. Next question. Okay. Hi, Steffi. This is Barris, and I am recording from Los Angeles, California. And my question is, if you could have dinner with one character from Killing Eve, alive or dead, who would it be and what would you want to talk about? Oh my gosh. Thanks. Oh, oh my gosh. Okay. Well, thank you, Barris. I really appreciate that question. It's a fun one. God, I mean, I feel like most people would predict me to say, Kenny, hello, Kenny, let's resurrect him back. We talk about that jawline though. Maybe also like Villanelle's French neighbor. Oh my God. I'm really just like choosing all of the guys that I found attractive at some point in the series. And I'm like, yep, him. Uh, you know who it would be, would be interesting. I would bring back Villanelle's dad. I'd bring back Villanelle's dad and ask him like, what was Villanelle like as a child? What was your relationship like with Villanelle? I would just like more insight into that relationship because he was talked about so much. She clearly loves her dad so much and has an idea, an image of who she was, who she remembers him to be. It would be interesting to actually hear from the man himself who helped raise Villanelle. Were you actually scared of Villanelle or was your wife kind of putting seed of doubt in your daughter's head? So maybe Villanelle's father. Oh my gosh, I'm literally obsessed with this next question. Okay, I feel a bit weird. I don't normally do things like this, but hi, I'm Delaney. I'm from Texas. And my question is, if you were going to be killed by Villanelle, if you had to be, and she gave you the option to choose, how would you want her to do it? <laughs> Bit weird, but that's the question. Bye. <laughs> okay, first of all, Delaney, fun fact, was the very first person who sent me a voicemail. So Delaney, you're a legend. We stand legends here. Thank you for that really wonderful question. I, I'm kind of obsessed with it. God, I really should have given more thought to this. How would I want Villanelle to kill me? I would want something a little bit more personal. I would want some contact with Villanelle. I don't know if like a nice shove. I mean, at least you go quick, right? And you have that like contact to contact, like 
you know, oh, I was kicked by Villanelle and then like a bus ran me over. <laughs> I want like some sort of like creative flair to it. I would like to know that maybe she thought specifically about how she's going to kill me. Like, do I want to fall? I mean, we know who fell this season. Where are you? I feel like the impact of the concrete would be like, ugh. Or do I want to feel the pain of a weapon? Oof, I'm like really trying to think. This is so morbid. Maybe like Villanelle could bake me a cake and I will feel bad because we know she is a shitty baker. Maybe like Villanelle could bake me a cake that has like poison in it and she could play act a little bit and be like, oh, I'm sorry. Like, I know this cake didn't turn out so well. And then I could be like, you know, out of the kindness of my own heart because I feel bad that she feels bad. I could be like, no, 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 no. I'll eat the cake. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. You don't have to. And then like, I want her to kind of emotionally manipulate me into believing that I have power in this situation. And I'll be like, no, surely I will eat the cake. And then I want her to like slide the cake over to me. Like I get a little piece and then maybe like we'll both pretend to like take a bite. And then like, as I'm taking the bite, I realize she didn't take the bite. And then I want to see like a, a, like a change in her, like some sort of like, oh, there's something deceptive that just occurred. And then as I see that she's, she's tricked me, I realize, oh my God, I'm choking. And then she can just like kind of watch me die. And I could like watch her smiling at me while I die. Let's move on from that. Next question is a voicemail as well. Hi, Steffi. Uh, my name is Daniel and I'm from Kazakhstan. I hope you're alive and okay after the finale because I'm still not. Uh, really enjoy your reactions and I was looking forward to them every day. Uh, my question to you is if you were to say, eliminate someone from the three main characters, uh, who would you kill? And please don't say no one. Thank you. Okay, well, I won't say no one. What if I was like, I would kill Villanelle. Bye, Jodie Comer. No, 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 no. I wouldn't get rid of Villanelle. So it's really between Carolyn or Eve. Sorry, Carolyn. I love Carolyn. I think Carolyn, Fiona Shaw, I really feel like she's underrated. Like, I think a lot of people, you know, obviously they love Jodie Comer. They love Villanelle. It's great. Like, oh. I'm on that bandwagon too. And like Eve, Sandra O, oh, without Eve and Sandra O, oh, like there is no show. So like, sorry, Carolyn. I do think you're hilarious. And Fiona Shaw, I think you're amazing. Okay, so now we go into speed round. These are like absolutes. Okay, so Daniel Harmon from Chicago, Illinois wants to know, how would you rank the three seasons? I would say one at the top, three, then two. And I think that might surprise some of you based on how I answered the previous questions, but I say three because I feel like three was more true to the original kind of direction that I feel like plot wise that was established in season one. Like we actually started hearing about the 12 again. And just like, they were just really like, oh my God, like the Villanelle and Eve moments specifically in season three are like some of my favorite scenes, moments across the entire series. So I would say season three, but I mean like season two, it's kind of like a fun side adventure, but that's how I'd rank one, three, then two. And then how would I rank the three pairs of supporting cast? Season one, Bill Elena, season two, Hugo Jess, season three, Jamie Bear. At the top, season one, Bill Elena, two, Hugo and Jess, three, Jamie and Bear. I just feel like the bitter pill people were like too nice for this world. And maybe that's what Eve needed. She needed some sense of like comfort and to be just like around regular nice people. But I liked, especially Hugo, he's kind of like skeezy, but I liked that. That was like an interesting character to have in the world. Jess, I feel like we didn't really get too much of, but let's just throw her in. And Bill and Elena for me, like, I just feel like you emotionally connected with those two specifically, Bill and Elena. Like I even said I missed Elena at the end of season one. And then also, um, ba -ba -ba, wants me to rank Gabriel, the boy in French hospital, Felix Villanelle's mentee, or Borka, her Elton obsessed half brother. Well, as a fellow stan of legends, Borka at the top, number one, two would be Gabriel and three would be Felix. Okay, and Anne wants to know what is your favorite scene in seasons one, two, and three? Favorite scene in season one? Oh my God. That entire sequence, I think it occurs episode four or five when Villanelle goes to Eve's house for the first time and she chases her up the stairs. They have that altercation in the bathroom and then she asks, <laughs> do I have dinner with you? <laughs> that entire like dinner scene was like, I didn't even know how to feel. Please. 
I'm, I, I'm, I don't know how to feel about this. So that for me was my favorite scene in season one. Favorite scene in season two is when Villanelle goes to Eve's house again and she's like in mourning, largely because like, I thought it was just like a nice mirroring, nice throwback to my favorite scene from season one. The costuming of Villanelle in that particular scene was so over the top, outrageous, petty, and Jodie Comer specifically acting wise was just like, wow. And then season three, oh my God. It's that bridge scene, that bridge scene. Like, honestly, I feel like that bridge scene largely affected how I felt about season three. Not to say that I didn't like season three again, but like, damn, they stuck their mother freaking landing with that bridge scene. So the bridge scene for me is my favorite scene in season three. Uh, Roberto from Sao Paulo, Brazil wants to know, what's your favorite quote of the show? Oh! God, I mean, like, there's so many iconic quotes and lines. Like, I mean, Eve's whole monologue at the end of season one, when she's like, I think about you all the time. I think about what you're wearing and what you're doing and who you're doing it with. I mean, that whole thing is great. Season two, there's something when Villanelle, when she meets Eve back at the cafe and Eve kind of like insults and slides her a bit and is like, well, clearly, you know, you're, you're not very good at pretending to be people. And then Villanelle says something like, Don't speak to me like that, Eve. I like you, but I don't like you that much. Don't forget, the only thing that makes you interesting is me. Like that? Oh my God, I was scared of Villanelle. I was like, oh shit. So like, I really, I don't know, for some reason I really like that line, but you know what? For this moment right now in season three, I will say my two favorite lines are one, when Eve specifically tells Villanelle, there's so many things. That specific part was so profound. I think it's something Villanelle needed to hear. I think it's something that Villanelle has been low-key wanting to hear. So to finally hear that from Eve, it was a bit of a release. Little did we know she was gonna be doing some releasing in a couple, you know, minutes following that. But that's probably my favorite quote from Killing Eve. And then I would also say too, Carolyn. Dear Geraldine, I think it's time you left. Iconic, amazing. I love that quote so much that in my future home, I literally want to make a custom mat that says, Dear Geraldine, I think it's time you leave. Next question comes from Remy from the Philippines. Remy wants to know, what's your favorite kill by Villanelle? I mean, there are iconic kills. Like, I mean, Bill's kill, oh God. That's the one kill even to this day. Like, despite me now really liking Villanelle when I watch it, I cringe. You had the emotional kill that Villanelle did with her mother. That was like a huge character turning point for her. I'm gonna say, you know, my personal favorite kill was when she did that little trick with the elevator with that random man, grabbed his tie and was like, you know, oh, where, where'd you get this tie? And he says something. And then she kind of hangs on to the tie and then the elevator like starts to go up and she's kind of like, tugging at it. For me, I really like that kill because one, that was the first real creative major kill we got in season two, post her being in this like rut, trying to get away from that crazy Julian in the beginning of season two. Like this is now Villanelle returned to form. I'm in a persona, I'm playing a role and it was creative. And I also kind of like this idea that we can't physically see what is going on behind the elevator doors. So we sort of let our imagination do the work. I like that mystery. Sometimes we imagine things to be a lot worse than they are. And that's kind of what made that kill stand out and be memorable to me. Favorite villain Eve scene? Bridge, bridge scene, easy. I think that was a huge turning point for both of the characters individually. It's Eve finally kind of like confirming or admitting like vocally, I'm not placing the blame of how my life has now turned out entirely on you. Like I am taking accountability here and being like, yes, I actually kind of wanted you to bring out the monster. So there's like Eve's like, woo, turning point growth. And then we also have Villanelle's huge character growth of giving Eve the agency, the option to walk away. So many people have noted this, but like to see where Villanelle's arc is at the end of season two, when she's like, Eve, your mind to getting to a place in season three finale, when she tells Eve now walk away and we don't look back and blah, 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 blah. Like it's that basic basic idea of like, if you love something, let it be free. And if it comes back to you, then it was meant to be. It's that. So like great, great individual character development for the two characters. And then like together, like as a villain Neve, it was just like, ooh, iconic moment. Oh my God. I'm probably gonna rewatch the bridge scene after I film this. Whoa, Lily from Manchester wants to know, you've watched all three series. What was your favorite episode? 
god. Oh. And then now we get the most important question asked by Amy P from Norway, Sarah from Italy, Gritz the Rat, Madeline from Michigan, and Jacob from Poland. Everyone wants to know what is your favorite Villanelle outfit slash look. I'm gonna just throw out a couple here. It's very hard for me to narrow down. I feel like I really started noticing Villanelle as a fashion icon come season two. Like I think the looks really leveled up in a way that like looks were cute in season one, like that pink dress iconic but season two okay loved every look she had in amsterdam from that pink jacket with the pants and then she was had a moment where she was like in this pink fuchsia magenta gown loved that and even at the end when she was wearing that green trench oh love that but also like that black like over the top dress she wore when she went to eve's house in season two and was being so freaking over dramatic and over the top and it's like what are you wearing with the veil can i take your veil iconic loved the as well the oxford outfit very androgynous that she was wearing when she went to kind of hunt down nico that was great and then i mean like oh my god the suit the bus suit hello the bus suit and then also like the yellow pants with the white and the polka dots and the thing like wrapped around her neck that was a look as well and even like honestly that yellow coat that she was wearing in the season three finale those are all my favorite looks and then we end finally with this question from Jothy Kohler from California bringing it home wants to know what was something that you really liked about Killing Eve when you first began watching it and by the end was there anything that took you by surprise that you ended up liking something that I really liked about Killing Eve immediately was this is a female-led show led by two great actresses i think people for the most part think killing eve is a two-woman show but i feel like especially with season three fiona shaw is up there i feel like with them i just feel like it's just such a great showcase of female talent period like acting sandra O, oh, jodie comer fiona shaw writing like you have female head writers every season amazing that was something i really really liked now in terms of storytelling or aesthetic i really enjoyed like how many different tones that are constant throughout there's like this thriller spy tone that they're balancing with dark comedy and drama and it doesn't seem like it's trying too hard it just is and it all flows like i genuinely am entertained when i watch this show i moved emotionally but also i laugh there's a lot of shows that i've covered especially on this channel where i'm not laughing during a lot of them because it's like ooh, this is heavy but killing eve is something that was so refreshing because i was getting all of these different tonal elements so that's something i would say i really liked and then i mean what took me by surprise probably like liking villanelle as much as i do now again the journey all of you saw it i really was like why does everybody like villanelle so much i swear to you i haven't looked at any spoilers but it seems like there's so many people who really like villanelle and i haven't gotten to that point yet now i get it i'm converted also completely surprised with how much I root for Villanelle and Eve. Those two characters, even from the get-go, even if initially I was not really rooting for them to be together, they were always very interesting and especially very interesting when they were together. And honestly, I'm just like also really surprised at how like obsessed I have become with this show. I am like listening to all the different podcasts now. Like I've stumbled upon Spilling Eve and also Well Well Villanelle, which someone had tweeted at me to, to go check out. So now I kind I kind of want to do this thing where I start from the beginning of Killing Eve season one, episode one, watch the episode and then listen to the corresponding episodes that cover that episode. And then like now, especially like also as well, like I'm watching all of these different interviews. Like I am immersing myself so much in Killing Eve in a way that I typically don't really do with a lot of the shows I cover on my channel. Like once I'm done watching it, it's very rare for me to be like, okay, now let me like, you know, get online on, on the boards and see like, I'm actually, I'm like going through Reddit threads. I don't do that often with any show period so i'm just very surprised with how like obsessed i've become like an emotionally invested i've become with the show so that's where i will end it
Woo! Oh my god, you guys. I don't know how long this question and answer ended up being, but I've literally been recording for an hour and a half now. So if you guys are still listening, I know this is gonna be a long one, but if you guys are still listening, still watching, I hope this was like relatively entertaining. I hope you guys feel satisfied with my answers. I'm sorry if I didn't get to your question. I tried answering as many as possible, but yeah, thank you guys so much for submitting your questions and not just for submitting your questions in today's Q&A, but for also just like keeping up with these videos like I still think it's very strange for me like I get it like I completely get it especially with the show like Killing Eve you want to know like ooh, how did this person react to this particular moment but it's still it's still crazy to me this idea that like people seek out my thoughts and my reaction to a particular show again I feel it's largely because you guys are primarily Killing Eve fans and I'm kind of just like you know along for the ride in the mix of it but I mean again I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching these videos being on this journey with me I, I can't believe we have to wait so long for season four and now with this coronavirus lord knows how long it will take for season four to come out but you know the actors the cast the crews they're everyone's well-being first and foremost before we get season and four back I would rather them take their time with the story and make it really really great before coming back and you know sharing it with all of us I'm so grateful that in a strange way my Killing Eve journey has been recorded immortalized online so yeah in short just thank you guys so much for for watching and I hope you guys stick around I know a lot of you tuned in primarily because of Killing Eve but you know I'm still here. I'm gonna be talking about other shows as well. Additionally, I will say I'm trying, I keep saying this, but I'm genuinely trying to integrate more video essays on the channel and Killing Eve. Like there's so many topics that I could make a video essay about in the world of Killing Eve. So this is definitely not the last time I'm gonna be talking about Killing Eve. So stay tuned, make sure you're subscribed and your notifications are turned on. God, I feel, whoo, I've been talking for a long time. God, I'm tired. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in keeping up with me, aside from following my YouTube channel, I also host a podcast called Diva Dailies. It's a podcast where we deconstruct divas on film and TV. I feel like a lot of you would really like it. And spoiler alert, I'm actually talking about the San Junipero episode of Black Mirror this upcoming Wednesday on Diva Dailies. So you guys check out that episode. I feel like you would really, really, really like that conversation around that episode. And yeah, that's pretty much it. As always, everything I said was just my own personal thoughts and all my humble opinion. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.